Welcome to another edition of Voices of the Disabled, brought to you by ADAPT Chicago Productions. Today we have an interesting guest, Mr. Michael Milligan, who I got to know through Ann Sheets. Michael, tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm an actor and a playwright and the uh, founder and artistic director of the Poor Box Theater. Um, and uh, the, the Poor Box Theater uh, is the vehicle I, I do my solo plays wow. that deal with different issues of the healthcare system. Yeah. Now, you're not from Illinois originally. Where are you from originally? I'm from Ohio originally. Wow. Uh, I went to Ohio State and then wow. I went to uh, the drama division at Juilliard. Oh, and wow. Lived in New York then wow. for 18 years and oh. moved, moved here to the to the real theatrical that, center yeah. of the universe, and Chicago, about three years Chicago, ago. Speaking of Chicago, I understand you were in a play that had its premiere in Chicago. I, that's right. Uh, I was in August Osage County um, on Broadway right. uh, as, a, as a replacement for uh, a Chicago favorite, Jan Barford. Mm -hmm. He left the production and, and um, I took wow. over the role of Little Charles and, wow. and played that show for 10 months. It wow, was that's a great. And so it's a play about illness and yeah. what people go through. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful So, play. Um, how did you come to write both Side Effects and Mercy Killers? Um, well, when I finished at Juilliard, mm -hmm. uh, I spent seven or eight years just traveling around wow. performing. Uh, yeah. in, in different regional theaters around the country, wow. which was always my dream, you know, wow. to get to play the great yeah. roles. Yeah. Uh, I did a lot of Shakespeare. That was mm. a, a passion of mine. Um, but as I, as I was pursuing this career, uh, I, I uh, went through several situations that gave me a kind of close-up view of how right. the healthcare system functions right. or mm -hmm. doesn't function right. uh, in, our, in our country. Um, I was in a relationship with someone who had a lot of uh, medical needs um, and uh, then a friend of mine encountered some problems and then I, I went through some things myself and, sure. and I think uh, this is true for a lot of people. Uh, right. Many people, especially when you're young, uh, don't think about, don't no. think about health care. It's not right. something that, that they're immediately confronted with and so a lot of people live uh, with illusions about uh, about what the system is like, right. and then I think most people who have uh, encounter a, a serious medical crisis, right. it comes as a shock oftentimes right. yeah. for uh, uh, in terms of the bureaucratic uh, things that people have to go through and, and right. the, the things that aren't covered, right. the expenses that mm -hmm. that are incurred. Uh, so. As my career was was uh, going up and up and right. up, actually, when the the August Osage County was my my Broadway debut. Wow. But in my relationship, um, my partner was uh, experiencing uh, more and more medical wow. issues, and so a lot of the uh, increase in income was going to, you know, trying to keep us right. afloat rent, that kind of thing. Right. Um, uh, she couldn't work often, and, wow. and when she did, was freelancing, so she was often on and off of insurance. Right. And all of these things just came as a, a complete surprise right. to me. Right. You know, um, and and uh, as that was happening, it sort of coincided with uh, Occupy Wall Street, um, oh, wow. and I, that was not very far from where I lived at the time, so yeah. I, I headed down there, and, and actually being around other people at that time after the financial crisis, uh, it, it wasn't the way that it was often portrayed on the nightly news. It was just yeah. people who were experiencing real crisis yeah. in their own lives, mm -hmm. many people just going down there right. because it was a place where people could get together and express mm -hmm. right. you know, uh, their, their outrage at, at what right. was happening to. Yeah. What, I, what I learned from that experience mm -hmm. was when I went down there, mm. all of a sudden, my problems, which I thought right. were just my individual right. problems, mm -hmm. yeah, I realized, oh, this is not just my problem. Right. The, the people are struggling. Right. Uh, this is a this is a social problem. Right. And um, I think that's a that's a real tragedy in our healthcare system. Right. Is mm. and and I call it a kind of a a silent. Uh, uh, Holocaust 
yeah. and, and it's people don't know about it right. and then when it happens to them yeah. they can't talk about it because mm -hmm. their lives are consumed by you know the trying to stay afloat um, trying right. to get the care they need right. uh, all that stuff and yeah, I so think it's like um, the theater community in the 80s with AIDS and so many people you know came down with AIDS and you know they needed a band together and help each other because that's right that. yeah, yeah yeah and um, tell us about each piece side effects and mercy killers yeah so mercy killers uh, I play a uh, yeah. a guy from southeastern Ohio wow. near West Virginia so in wow. Appalachian yeah. country he's a uh, auto mechanic yeah. um, I I think you could safely say his politics are Right. sort of on the right side of the spectrum. He right. probably considers himself a libertarian. He right. enjoys listening to Rush Limbaugh at yeah. his, his shop. His wife is more of a hippie. Mm -hmm. And uh, the play is about um, she has cancer and they are uh, struggling with trying to pay for yeah. her treatments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the play is actually set in a police station and so he's yeah. giving his testimony to the police right. about something that's that's happened um, yeah. you you find out early on that he's helped her to die yeah. um, and so the play is is as he's giving his testimony uh, sort of uh, detailing the anatomy of a medical bankruptcy what that mm. looks like yeah. and, and all the things that they went through they lost their house to try mm. to you know um, mm. th to pay the medical bills right. uh, they, they get caught in the after the financial crisis in a right. crisis in a subprime loan mm -hmm. um, she loses her insurance and so there's mm -hmm. they're trying to navigate Medicaid mm -hmm. they eventually get a divorce so mm -hmm. that she can qualify yeah. uh, for Medicaid and and as he's describing um, mm -hmm. the situation he's also struggling with his identity Mm -hmm. and with the assumptions that he had about the world mm -hmm. um, and there's a sense that he's done everything right mm -hmm. yeah he upheld his side of the right. social contract right. he was self-reliant all this stuff but right. none of that in the end um, has helped him mm -hmm. and he finds himself in a situation mm -hmm. that uh, in some ways is created by his own belief system right projected at large. Self-reliance. Yeah. 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 Um, what is side effects? Uh, well, side effects, uh, I, I should say, after I wrote Mercy Killers, right. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. It, it, well, it yeah. didn't really seem like uh, the, the kind of play that would, you know, right, <laughs> be, be something that uh, the sort of commercial regional theater right, would right. jump at. It's mm -hmm. a very heavy, hard-hitting play. But I found um, a great deal of support for the play uh, in with with uh, healthcare advocacy groups like yeah. uh, Physicians for National Health right. Program, mm -hmm. uh, Illinois Single Payer Coalition, right. mm -hmm. uh, groups like that all over the country. Right. They sort of found out about the play, wow. and so we started doing a, a kind of guerrilla theater tour, wow. which was very exciting for me, yeah. um, both as an activist uh, around healthcare, but also right. as an artist, right. uh, sort of challenging what uh, what we think of as what yeah. is appropriate material. Right. Um, and I understand you had the play in New York was done at the Harold Clerman Theater. Yeah, the play, the and play was... Please tell us, for those who don't know, who Harold Clerman was. Well, Harold, Harold Clerman was a member of the group theater. He was married to uh, Stella Adler. Right. Uh, the group theater was Stella, Harold Clerman, Leah Kazan, right. um, Lee Strasberg, right. Lee J. Cobb. Right. And they sort of um, transformed American theater right. and and the acting style so right. when people think of this sort of old wooden style of Hollywood right. acting mm -hmm. the group theater was was really the first uh, theater that was using the realism uh, that right. was sort of developed in in the Moscow art mm -hmm. theater and Stanislavski yeah, and really was I think dedicated to doing issues doing yeah theater, they, it yeah. was a it was a social you know the, the play right. should be about social issues at the time mm -hmm. but they also then sort of gave birth to what people might know of as the actors studio right. and then all of the famous movie stars right. that we think of as mm -hmm. you know Marlon yeah. Brando uh, Paul Newman James Dean Al Pacino all right. those people had connections to, to that that 
new style of acting. So, so, so um, side effects. Tell oh us. well, let me let me just okay, say. So the director of of the plays okay, that right. I collaborated right. with in creating these was Stella Adler's grandson, oh, wow. Tom Oppenheim, who runs oh, wow. the Stella Adler Studio in in New York. So, wow. so we used the pieces um, in in addition to the the social message in there. Mm -hmm. We also used them as a sort of laboratory to reinvestigate what it was that um, you know the the group theater was right. was working on and what the Stella Adler technique was all about right. to, to get this kind of real uh, visceral and immediate right. style mm -hmm. of acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and, and then so as I was traveling right. around uh, performing the play in collaboration with um, doctors and nurses, because right. oftentimes they're, they're the ones who are uh, on, on the vanguard in terms of this right. uh, movement for universal health care, right. um, uh, they would be setting up performances, like I did a, a tour of, of California with the California Nurses Association. Wow. Uh, we did 16 wow. different cities, wow. and we were in, um, uh, sometimes we were in a symphonic wow. like music hall, 1,600 seats, wow. and then the next, next day we might be in the church community room, wow. you know, with, with lights that I bought at a, a hardware store wow. and set up. And, and we never really knew what the venue was going to be like until, uh, you know, two hours before the right. performance. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was an incredible yeah. experience of, of now, just... Now, I know you did the show in Texas. Tell us for a moment about that experience. Well, just to, just to say, okay. as I was doing uh, okay. uh, uh, the collaboration with the nurses and right. the doctors, uh, I was staying with them to keep the cost right. down. Mm -hmm. yeah. and they would often drive me around. So. I got to know a lot of doctors and nurses mm -hmm. personally, mm -hmm. and as we would talk about the healthcare system, I started mm -hmm. to hear similar complaints and issues wow. and frustrations. Sure. Real serious stuff mm -hmm. that I thought, this is something that people need to hear about because I think the, the, the larger public is, for the most part, unaware of the, mm -hmm. the, the uh -huh. conditions that our healthcare workers are working in right. and then also how those conditions affect their ability to give good care. Right, right. Um, so uh, one, of the f one of the guys who organized the tour was in Texas, uh, a yeah. nurse by Ken Kenegas, a yeah. wonderful uh, nurse and also uh, ha activist. Wow. Um, so he helped me set up mm. some interviews with mm. doctors um, as I was traveling around right. uh, to do research on the second place, mm -hmm. side effects, yeah. mm -hmm. which is about a, an individual doctor who's, who's trying to maintain the integrity of his practice mm -hmm. as all of these, you know, as, as the system is becoming more and more bureaucratized, right. as there's more yeah. and more time spent dealing mm -hmm. with insurance sure. companies and pre-authorization calls and all this. And the effect of all of it is that he's able, he's only able to see his patients for a shorter yeah. and shorter amount of time. And mm -hmm. this is something that people are aware of is happening. Oh, yeah. And when they see the play, they yeah. say, oh yeah, that's why my doctor is, is spending less time with me or right. spending all the time staring at their computer screen. Yeah, this I mean, kind that's of what stuff. happens to me when <laughs> I go to the doctor. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah so, so the play is from the, that doctor's perspective, okay. and mm -hmm. he's dealing with a number of issues. He has an offer from the hospital to sell his practice, oh, wow. which is something he doesn't want to do. His father was a doctor, so he's wow. trying to practice the kind of medicine that he remembers his father practicing, mm -hmm. but more and more he's unable to do that. So mm -hmm. he's thinking about uh, selling his practice. Um, he's also dealing with a f kind of frivolous lawsuit. Wow. And on top of all that, he has a secret, which is that he did make a serious medical wow. mistake um, uh, several years earlier, mm -hmm. and he struggles with it. And, mm -hmm. and the play sort of asks the question of, mm -hmm. was that his fault, or mm -hmm. was, it, was it all of our faults that we put, we, we right. put the doctor in this situation where he's unable to give mm -hmm. you know, a, a a high standard right. of care. Mm -hmm. So to answer your, your question, right. I was in Texas and Ken uh, organized uh, a performance for a, a group called the Living Hope Wheelchair Association. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the incredible things about 
for me personally mm -hmm. in, in doing this touring that I've been doing yeah. is that uh, being able to collaborate with, with uh, incredible activists and people from around the country. Mm -hmm. And this group was um, primarily um, Latino Americans, right. uh, sometimes undocumented, who mm -hmm. were injured mm -hmm. on the job mm -hmm. um, and had serious spinal injuries mm -hmm. and f were without recourse to wow. uh, medical services, right. um, insurance. Right. Uh, oftentimes right. in Texas, there are no there's OSHA, there, sure, that no, yeah. doesn't have much of a presence right, there. Yeah. There's no workman's compensation, wow. all that stuff. So mm -hmm. they were basically uh, left with nothing. And so they mm -hmm. formed this, this wow. group, um, you know, as a sign of solidarity right. to mm -hmm. help each other through right. the crisis. They make bird feeders and wow. they sell these beautiful bird feeders as a way to raise money right. and um, raise awareness about right. the issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I got invited to this, it was a Workers' Memorial Day dinner, which is mm. uh, in this community center. And in the center of all, every table, it was oh, a dinner, wow. was a, a boot filled with wow. flowers. It was a wow. work boot. And mm. it was the boot of someone who, was, who, who died on the job wow. in the previous year. And one of the members of the Living Hope Wheelchair Association wow told his story and he was speaking in Spanish. Mm. What was incredible about that situation was we had uh, uh, non-Spanish speakers oh. had an earpiece. Oh, wow. And so we could hear what he was saying as he was saying it, wow. you know. And he told the story about how he was working on the highway and the, the boss, somebody forgot to put the orange cones out, oh, wow. you know, in the appropriate way. Wow. And he was struck by a car Mm. And he woke up in the hospital, and there was a mm. guy there with a clipboard who oh. got him to sign some papers that basically yeah. signed away, you know, wow. his uh, signed, uh, you know, where they were basically absolved yep. of their liability. Wow. And he was left in this situation, yeah. um, and it was it was a heartbreaking, deeply wow. compelling so to to hear the story immediately huh. in it, and so. My play was translated into Spanish. Wow. I gave a performance of it. Wow. They were there, it was a fundraiser for them, mm -hmm. but they were all in attendance too. Mm -hmm. and, and we had a talk back afterwards wow. that mm -hmm. they participated in. And it was incredibly powerful wow. to me to hear how the story resonated with them, yeah. that they could, they could empathize and identify with this. Right man from southeastern Ohio mm -hmm. whose yeah. politics, you know, yeah, probably, are probably yeah. not aligned with no. <laughs> them mm -hmm. at all. Right. He's, you know, he says some, you know, really insensitive, bigoted things yeah. in the course of the right. play, mm -hmm. the character does. Right. But it doesn't keep people from empathizing and right. identifying with him. Right. And, and to me that really speaks to the power of the theater, but also this kind of storytelling. Right. And I think that, that right now in particular, mm -hmm. the, the power of storytelling, of people sharing the right. details of their, of our, our individual struggles, right. you know, to, to make it, to, right. to, to live, to, right. that, that these things are an antidote to right. the, the right. forces out there right. that are trying to Separate. split us up into different tribes so, for political So how did you reasons. come in contact with Ann Sheets? Well, Ann Sheets um, uh, was, has been a big champion of, wow. of my mm -hmm. plays. Right. Um, uh, the, originally, I did uh, uh, some performances of Mercy Killers okay. uh, with the American Theater Company. Okay, yeah. um, and my one of my dear friends, P.J. Paparelli, who passed away right, tragically right. a couple years ago, he actually gave me my equity card when I got out of Juilliard. Oh, it was wow. his first uh, wow. professional job, wow. and my first. He, he wow. cast me as Mercutio in uh, Romeo oh, wow. and Juliet down in St. Louis. Uh, wow. So we've we've uh, had yeah. a strong connection since then. But he yeah. um, presented uh, mm -hmm. Mercy Killers at 
ATC. What? And then the next season made it a part of the season. Oh. And um, in order to help get the production here, right. I reached out to um, I Illinois Single Payer Coalition, okay. ah. and they helped to sponsor the production right. along with uh, National Nurses United yep. and Physicians mm -hmm. for National Health Program. And so we did that production there. And um, part of my compensation was well, that I could get 10 seats to each production, oh, which I wow, offered right. to yeah. ISPC. Mm -hmm. um, and so Anne was, was uh, bringing people wow, to the show. Uh, she, it, she brought a lot of medical students to the show. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think she and I both think that the piece is, is very important for uh, right. medical students to see because a lot of times I think medical students are unaware yep. of the sort of human issues and, and what it's gonna be like to practice medicine. Right. I mm. think they, a lot of them go into it with the kind of idealism that they're right. gonna be helping people right. and they don't, they don't know that there's going to be all of these hindrances right. um, in their way. And mm -hmm. so to me, the, the play acts as a kind of inoculation for them right. so that when they, as they're heading out into practice, right. they have, they know what's, what to expect so that they can begin to take agency over how right. their practice functions right. and hopefully even, you know, become activists themselves right. and, and advocates and creating a, right. a real system mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. right. is m about the art of medicine right. and not the business of, right. you know. So I think we're kind of up. Um, how can people contact you and, you know, in the Chicago area if they'd like to see? Uh, I encourage people to visit the Poor Box Theater right. website. There's a, you know, contact right. info right. there. Right. Please reach out. I'm interested in, in doing right. the play, you know, wherever. I, right. I've performed it in, in churches and wow. union halls and yeah. libraries and right. I performed it at the uh, the, the Capitol building oh, for le right. state legislators wow. in, in uh, oh, St. Paul, right. Minnesota. So wow. if anybody has any interesting right. ideas about, about right. how these plays can be produced, right. uh, please have, please check out the site. Also, both plays are available in their entirety to watch. Uh, on my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which is so Poor Box Theater YouTube channel, they can watch right. um, both both plays. Right. So. Okay. Well, I think thank you very much, Michael. Hope we have you back on again. You're very yeah. Thank you. Thanks, thank thanks you. for having me. Thanks.